Hey, how's it going everyone? So, I've been holding off on doing this video for a while because I wanted to do my research before I just started blabbing. Um, so these are all authentic tools. I know I usually show uh, modern tools that I've napped and uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show you all this. So these are all around 120,000 years old to around 40,000 years old. They are from Dordogne, France. Or around that area in France, it's a it's a really big uh, river system, um, very famous. I'm sure a lot of you know what I am talking about. So we're gonna go from upper row left to right. So first off, we have a side scraper here. And this is just a like as someone who is a big Neanderthal nerd, these are just absolutely amazing to hold. Um, you can see the ripples very well, at least I hope you can. Uh, there's the striking platform. There is the cone where the Neanderthal who made this struck and it turned into the tool. This probably was used for, uh, well, most likely scraping hides, but also could have been used as a knife. It's a very thin or a very uh, low angle there so it could have been used as a back knife um, but I feel like it was more likely a um, side scraper so I hope you can see some of the retouch work on it very beautiful material underneath the patina um, yeah not much else to say about a scraper really I'll take I'll have photos at the end of the video for you guys to look at Okay, so next is a transverse scraper, and this is more, this is definitely a scraper. Um, you can tell by the steep angle. Uh, the striking platform is right here. So they hit it, and they actually hit it twice. Um, they hit it once, and then uh, I think they hit it once here, and then it sort of rippled. You can see where it cracked. Um, this could also, well, this has been in the earth for hundreds of thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. So this could be natural damage, but as a modern foot napper, I think that they uh, struck it once, it broke, and then they struck it again and got this tool. I do not think this is the intended tool, um, but they did use it, they used it a lot, and you can see that they used it so much that they actually started hinging it, and then I think they dropped it once they could no longer use it as a proper tool because if you look at the uh, the profile of the blade you can see that it dips there and that doesn't make a very good scraper you want a scraper to be more um, flat and or uh, the center line to be higher up but they could have also flipped it around um, they could have been sawing wood with this it's without a micro a microscope or whatever it's called it is, uh, it will be nearly impossible for me to tell. I just have my books, which I will talk about after. Okay, next tool is called, is what I think would be called a convergent tool. Uh, this could be, this could be a spearhead, a knife, um, hundreds of other things. It could have been a backed knife. You can see where they retouched it a bit on the edges. Right there. They definitely retouched it right here. And then there's the striking platform. They retouched it here. Um, my thoughts is that this would have been a knife. Or even possibly a spear. It's really hard to tell. Um, but this would have been a great tool back then. I apologize if you can hear my hamster in the background. She is currently running on her wheel. Alright, so this next tool is just a level wall blade. Um, there's the bulb of percussion, the platform, very steep angle. Uh, they did not prepare the facets though. Facets are, well you'll see coming up. But uh, yeah, very beautiful level wall blade. This is just an honor to hold. Um, it's still sharp, like I gotta be careful. I don't see... Except for right there, which might be retouching. But other than that, it does not seem like they used this tool for very long. 
or uh, whoever used it could have lost it in a travel or something. Um, there's no visual, visible, let me think about that word for a second, visible damage done on it, or recent damage as they call it. So it's been sitting in the ground for tens of thousands of years and is in nearly perfect condition. And I'm the second, uh, second person in the modern world to touch these. The guy who found it would obviously be the first. Um, as you can tell by my Canadian accent, I am not from France. France, uh, I'm from Canada. So pretty hard to find uh, Neanderthal artifacts here. So if you're watching this, um, thank you very much for sending me these. It's, uh, it's an honor. So, yeah. Hope you've seen that enough. Next is a, another level wall blade. And uh, after I'm done showing you the rest, I have something cool to show you afterwards. So this one is heavily patinaed. Um, it's a nice grayish flint underneath. Uh, the platform, they, it looks like they attempted to repair it or uh, prepare it and get facets, but it did not. And you can see how they set it up. They took one flake somewhere around here, boom, boom, and then got this beautiful level wall flake. Uh, again, no visible retouches on it. Uh, for my quick research, this area is loaded with flint, so I think the Neanderthals that were making these tools were not very... Um, they didn't carry their tools very long because they could always just replace them. And believe me, it's it's easier to just make a new tool like this than to uh, resharpen re them once you uh, learned. So yeah, beautiful patina on this. Nice... Uh, Nice profile. Um, there's one little chip right here that I think happened in transit, but it's still, uh, maybe not. It's still very white. It would have been very dark underneath. And you see where the clay or the uh, the iron from the ground seeped in there. So yeah, A beautiful little blade there. And now. In my personal opinion, the last two are the most exciting. So, I'm sure you all know what this is. This is the uh, quintessential tool for the Neanderthals. Uh, this is a hand axe. You can see the beautiful platform, or, uh, well, side view, I guess you'd call it. The black, the back, sorry. Uh, you can't really see the flakes too well on camera. Uh, it... In all honesty, stone tools are something that you have to see in person to uh, to get the uh, whole effect. But this has a beautiful center line. Uh, this this definitely was retouched over time. This was not something that was dropped. It just looks well. They might have lost it, uh, but they definitely retouched it a bunch. You can see on the edges where all the retouch work is. Uh, there is the striking platform. They did prepare a facet. Hit it right there struck it and then they bifaced it into this uh, tool there's no telling how many animals were butchered with this tool right here like if 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 stones could talk imagine the stories we could hear from it all right and we're back sorry about the cut my phone once again ran out of batteries um, I meant storage. I really don't know how to clear the storage. Uh, anyways, so this is probably my favorite of all of them, even though I like all of them equally. But uh, as someone who is um, fully invested in the level in level one technology right now, this has to be my uh, favorite artifact right now. So it is a centripetal level one blade. So this was taken from a centripetal level wall core. Um, you can see the facets are just beautifully prepared on this. Um, they're the little ridges right here. You can kind of see them at certain angles. Um, but this is classic level wall technology. Um, it's made from a nice brown flint. Uh, it's nice and long blade. It's not broken. It's all the original edge. Uh, it's slightly retouched over here, and it's definitely been retouched over here. 
and um, yeah, it's just a beautiful tool. Um, like I said with the hand axe, if tool if stones could talk, imagine the stories you could tell. Uh, I'm sure you can see the flaking. It's just absolutely stunning on this, and uh, you can tell it came from a beautiful centripetal or a, a classic turtle core. And uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful to have these. Um, yeah, not really much to say about a stone. It's more of a visual thing, really. Some nice patina on the uh, the belly of the beast. Look at those facets again. It's the platform, the bulbar percussion. And the nice uniform of the blade. Alright, so something cool I wanted to show you is uh, a blade I made a few years ago is actually nearly the same as an artifact, our, uh, an original artifact. So mine's on the left, and obviously the original is on the right. They both have very similar profiles. See if I can do a side by side here. Uh, yeah, so there you go. They have both have very similar profiles. They uh, they look kind of the same. Now, obviously, one is made from Onondaga chert. The other one is made from uh, what I presume is French flint. And obviously, uh, this one is much younger than this one. New age of Neanderthal technology. Um, so now I wanted just to go over some of my sources of where I got the names for some of these things. Uh, the Middle Paleolithic Adaptation Behavior and Vari Variability. Jeez, that's a mouthful. Uh, and I just bookmarked some pages. So I read about this. Uh, the sites I was reading about are closest to uh, the uh, Dorgani River. And... Uh, yeah, I don't want to show too much of this because I can get copyrighted. Um, but yeah, it just shows a bunch of tools. And uh, I would read the description of the tools and all that and then uh, try to match it up best uh, with ages and how close it is. So yeah, great book. Um, great book if you're interested in the Middle Paleolithic uh, or Neanderthals, really. Um, you can get it on Amazon, eBay, wherever. And, uh, yeah, so these are the tools. Uh, thank you all for watching. Not much else to say, really. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope my voice was, uh, okay. hope you could hear me. All right. And, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.